Hello YouTubers, today I'm going to show you all the goods that I received from the auction that that I showed you in the last video. I got it all here, which some of, this is some of it right here, but I'm going to start off with this projector here. This is one of the projectors in the pile. There is two, but this is one of them. We have an NEC model one. U310W, this camera doesn't focus, but it's a, this is a projector, one of those wall mounted type projectors at the little mirror here. Now this projector is new enough that it has the HDMI, which is a bonus, like let's say you want to hook up your fire stick on this, you can do that. Or your Playstation, PS4 and stuff, you go. We can play games on this, no problem. And this is also DLP technology. Now, if you're wondering why there's lines in the picture, it's not like that in person. It's just because of the color wheel in this. There's a color wheel that produces these vibrant colors on our screen here. Now, this dark spot is present in person, which is unfortunate because the mirror got scratched a little bit. Not by me, but when they packed it up, it got scratched a little bit, but not a big not a big deal. When you're watching videos and stuff. It's it's not really that super distracting. This white screen here is not a not was not included. This was actually a white blanket that my sister dumped in you know one of the closets. Some of you probably might know her, but I don't give no big deal about that person. In fact, her songs are really annoying. <laughs> but. Right, stick with oldies, that's all I gotta say. Stick with oldies or, you know, other cultural music. But, we'll test the video out here. And also, while I'm doing that, this computer is also part of the pile. It had nothing on the hard drive. This is actually my own Windows I put on there. I put Windows 7 32-bit Ultimate on this computer. This is a 32-bit computer. It has 2 gigs of RAM. It has a 320 gigabyte hard drive and a Western Digital Blue Series hard drive. The original hard drive in this wasn't really that good, so. But I like Western Digital drives. Now this is one of the, this is a student laptop. This camera does not like to focus. I think I'm going to have to resort onto the GoPro soon. <laughs> Could I have a GoPro around here. First, let's put on a... A very friendly video. One of my stash videos here. In case you're wondering, those are all my videos I like to download from YouTube. There we go. I know I'm not stealing their content. In fact, if you want to go search this video up, I'll give this person a shout out. <laughs> there we go. I don't know who this person is, but if you want to look up the video title. It's called All of My Pets, Meet Them All or something like that, Meet All 96. So if you want to search it up, knock yourselves out. <laughs> Free advertisement. <laughs> you know, that's my fault for disturbing that, but it's choppy now because of the network. There we go, now it's all good. You know what's crazy? Little tiny mirrors make up this moving picture you see here. Little tiny mirrors in a color wheel. Pretty interesting. I find it very fascinating. Now, what this projector is sitting on top of is that Panasonic monitor. Which now we're going to move on to this DVR here. It also was a set for from this. It's a set for this monitor here. It works. Just works beautifully. The only downside is it has some ghosting on the picture. Kind of like those old, old arcade games and stuff. Archaic type games But that's about it now. I actually hooked it up to this projector so we don't have to have an, a secondary monitor In fact, there's some old footage on here which For to go and access the DER in the projector. I gotta click S video And it's got a search for it and There we go. There's some footage of my high school on here from like eight years ago <laughs> During the daytime. It's actually playing right now. I gotta say is that the video quality is not the best. 
Very, even way worse than these cameras. And that kind of bright light you see around it, you can't see that in person. That's called infrared light. <clears throat> Let's see. That's something you probably learned today. Infrared produces bright, vibrant light on your camera. If you want to be fascinated by it, point the TV remote at your camera lens and you'll be amazed on how how bright it looks in, on video. It's invisible light to us. We can't see infrared. Like I said, it's that, that quality is real horrible compared to these cameras, the, especially those Zozai cameras. In fact, if I wanted to, right now, I could hook that DVR up to those Zozai cameras out there. Because they're all B and C. This is a 4 channel, unfortunately. If this was an 8 channel, I probably would have hooked it up. But for the time being, I want, I'm sticking with this. I, like this. I love this DVR. It's amazing. Catching cats chase each other every night. <laughs> then we get a nice view of, you know, Christmas decorations. Because <laughs> it's that time of year. But this is all right here so far. This is what I have in the room. Now, this remote does not belong with this projector. It actually goes to the other projector, which I'll take you to in a little bit. But the, the really nice thing with this remote is it's got a nice little laser pointer, which I've been playing with the laser pointer now. So, just like pointing laser pointers and stuff in here. So, pretty cool. Now, these three cameras were only in use. The fourth one was, there was never a fourth camera installed on this. I don't have the cameras for, for this DVR. They're actually still on the school. They just left them there just, you know, to disguise them as real cameras. But, you know, at this point, they're considered non-functional because they're not even hooked up to a power source. And they have no night vision. It's one of those big old school cameras. Bigger than the, those cameras. But... I'm going to go take you to the workshop now where all the goodies are. More goodies, you know, right? Another one with this. Oh, before I before I take you there, I did have to do some repairs to this. This little sucker here was a problem why it never worked from the start. Besides me having to order a bulb for 40 bucks, not bad for a bulb. It's not an OEM bulb. I know, I know the risk and stuff, but... I just wanted to see if this worked, and sure enough, like, as soon as I turned it on, it would start up, the bulb will start firing up. Because, you know, it's a little xenon bulb that's in there. It would kind of briefly turn on and then shut itself right off, and then the status light gave me four blinks, which I looked it up on the internet, resulted in a fan error. And I knew exactly what it was, it's from the start, I noticed this fan kept trying to ramp up, and then it kept slowing down. At a constant 12 volt voltage, this fan is faulty. So I bodged another one in there from another DLP TV. So I should have extra parts laying around. If the DLP TV doesn't work, and if it's not related to the fan, just tear it apart. If it's nothing simple beyond repair, then take the parts out and you you'll be amazed on what what parts can be useful later on. And this is this fan is rated for to be next to the bulbs, so. That's the bonus. So now I'm going to take you to the shop where the, all the other stuff is. Oh yeah. But now, this is where all the magic is. We have my starboard up. Yes, I managed to put that up on the wall. It weighs like 20 pounds on each side. And I also used the proper anchors so this wouldn't fall off the wall but we'll turn on this big beast projector that weighs like 20 pounds as well this actually got pulled out of the gym at my school they apparently what was going on with this projector was at first it would refuse to turn on but somehow I managed to turn it on and I disabled the second bulb the second bulb did work, but it was active. It was flickering a lot. And apparently, some technicians already had looked at this, and they said that the ballast is potentially bad. Now, I haven't replaced the ballast on this yet, but and it's not a big deal if it has one lamp. 
It could be used as an ordinary projector. But, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it'll be fine. And it's pretty bright with one bulb. You don't need to use both bulbs. Unless you're in like a very brightly lit up area. But most people would use this in like their man cave with the lights off or dim. Excuse me about that. Now right here is also another computer that came from the pile. I actually also installed Windows 7 Ultimate on this sucker. Another right this is an older student laptop, which these were never I never seen these particular computers before. It's actually a Dell Latitude D520. But this projector's got all kinds of all kinds of inputs and outputs. It's got these funky, looks like BNC component type inputs for, you know, the old style computer graphics cards. We have to, it's basically like a component cable. I've never dealt with those, but yeah. Unfortunately, there's no HDMI, but it's got a DVI-D input. Which means that we could actually, if I wanted to, I could buy one of those. HDMI to DVI-D adapters and project like an Amazon Fire Stick on this. Same with the VGA too, it's 1080p. It's got all kinds of stuff on here. Nifty features. Here's a picture. Unfortunately, I can't make it cover this full screen because this projector is too close to the screen. This is designed to be far, far away from the screen as possible. I don't know how much this thing costed, but it's pretty big, and I bet it was quite expensive. Probably a couple grand. <laughs> Especially having two bulbs in it. Now, what I know is this board cost $7,000, and this is a first generation of Hitachi Star Boards. What's unfortunate of this is I cannot get, get it to work in the middle part of the screen here. There's something going on here. Or it's not wanting, it's not sensing my finger all the way. It looks like now it's starting to sense something. Actually, I have it opened up on this and it's just started doodling. But there's all these little hotkeys on the side of the hall, and little hotkey type. But, see, it actually works. This part of it works. Let's see, it's pink. Uh, we have. It is not calibrated either, in case you're wondering. And I tried calibrating it, but what's preventing me from fully calibrating it is this section of the board doesn't work. Now, there is no circuitry or anything behind this white part of the board. Where all the magic is, is all up here. You might probably see infrared lights, the same deal you saw in the room on the other camera. But that technology is used on this. There's a little, like, half ring of... Infrared lights on the left side and also some more on the right side and then right along the middle here There's a little There's the main actual processor slash unit that is responsible for the touch screen of the touch part of this board to happen As you can see there is this very reflective material on the side You can kind of see a reflective material right here from one of my lights That is so that infrared can shine back up to the receivers. There is two receivers up there, kind of like a remote sensor receiver that's on a TV. Exactly the same technology used up here. But you know, for this application, they might be going bad, they might be all out of whack. I'm not entirely sure, but maybe someday we have to go dig in my parts bin over here and dig out some TV boards, because I guarantee I have some flown around in there. I don't know if I'll be picky about the value though, but it's easy to take the top off. There's four screws on the top. Just take it off, and then this whole top trim comes off, and I have direct access to everything. But yeah, that's that is that is what it is right there. And also, same deal. Test the video. There. Let's use a brilliant uses for satellite dishes video. Give him a. Yeah, if you want to look up the video, knock yourselves out. 
There's a there's a video right there. Now this actually has speakers, left speaker and right speaker. A beefy speaker for this big projector. Pretty loud. This is actually at a low volume. So there it is. DLP technology. Now this actually came from my math teacher's classroom too, because he came up to me and said, "This is my board." He said it worked, but unfortunately, it doesn't really work here because I think what happened was during the transport, the board got dinked around a little bit, got all all misaligned and stuff. And over here, so right here we got a a brother typewriter that works zero problems. This is your PC back in the day. <laughs> Nothing wrong. And they got a decent, they got a decent print here. Kids, this is called a typewriter. In case you're not wondering, this is way before word processors existed. This is how you used to type your essays and stuff on every day. And if you needed to erase a mistake, you had no choice but to use whiteout or start all over again. And then last but not least, we have laser jet printers. This one works beautifully, just it needs new toner, judging by these horizontal lines. That one has a, the final fusing stage is messed up on that. And then this one, an little eruption happened with the magenta cartridge. That's what happened. And a little bit of cyan exploded too. Probably gonna just give this away for parts. Sell that for 20 bucks. Probably sell this eventually. I'm not entirely sure. Some of the stuff I'm keeping, so. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. And there's a lot more to come with the intercom system. So stay tuned for that next month because that is coming up. 30, kind of almost towards the end of November already. And we, we know what that means. We all know what that means. Intercom system update of the year and special New Year's videos that we do around here. So stay tuned for that and be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications if you desire.